Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the parlor, said the spider to the fly. Yeah, bagpipes. Ah, uh, I'm I'm so happy right now. Um, I got my left shoulder uh, rotator cuff fixed. It's like perfect working now. And the bagpipes go under the left shoulder to play them. And I haven't been able to play them. But I can play them again. And that's just really cool for me anyway. Uh, hi. Yeah, I'm sorry. My name's Roddy. And you're on Piper's Pit Podcast One. Holy cow. I got... Uh, if you're weak of heart, don't listen to this podcast. You know, they wanted somebody to get down and dirty. They always pick me. <laughs> Even with Vince back in the day. When Jesse Ventura, I was standing right next for Jesse Ventura and Vince McMahon are going back and forth. And Jesse Ventura looked at Vince and says, you, and he's rocking, he's got a chew in his bottom lip. He said, you don't scare me, McMahon. I've been under fire. <laughs> Holy cow. I love Jesse. I love Vince. Fuck. He just, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, unique individual. There's a couple things before we get here because my, uh, first of all, my guest this today, uh, the, you know, this podcast is uh, Jake the Snake. And I'm, I'm warning you. I'm telling you. I, you know, don't let the kids listen to it. This thing got out of hand and it got, it got dark. It's dark, okay? And it's adult subjects. And before I get to it, I, I want to address something. And, and I want to say this. Um, I'm not a judge. I, I'm not qualified. I've done a lot of things unorth unorthodox uh, that people may not agree with. And so uh, I very seldom give my opinion, never on uh, politics, because uh, I've never voted in my life. I don't think that I'm qualified. Um, Having said that, I want to talk about the police, uh, Ferguson, the way the civilians are acting, the way the police are reacting, the shooting of two policemen, uh, which is just heinous, just heinous, uh, you know. The, it's the badge that you're supposed to respect, it's the badge. If the human being inside it uh, is not carrying it properly, that's kind of where, where we start to get into, into problems. But being in the business that I've been in all my life, I'm going to share something with you and see what you think. Um, a long time ago, I don't know, in the 90s, they, some network started a show. And the music to it was bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do, what you gonna do when they come for you. And it's called Cops, okay? Now, that show has been playing for so long that I, it's only human when policemen or anybody else would go out and policemen in this case arrest somebody and bring them back and they're on camera and it goes all over the nation and then their friends go, hey man, we saw you and like they can't help but get caught up and they become a star in their own realm. As human, I've been in this business my entire life. I'm on TV every day since I've been 15. I don't know every day, but you know, I might have missed two. When you... <laughs> I don't, I don't understand for the sake of only economics for some network that can put police on for monetary, monetary gain, for money, for money, for money. Now, over a period of time, look at the people of America. America was built on... Um, a revolution, a revolution of being, you know, taxation without representation. They, they won't be bullied. An, uh, an American will not be bullied. You can tell that with the horrible 9-11 and many other, you know, instances that have happened. American is made up of people that will not be bullied. 
Now, can you imagine, and you you must, this show's been going on for 20 years, 15 years. Bad boy, bad boy. There's another arrest, bad boy. There's another arrest. You know, it, just back in your, the part of the brain that you're not using, it, it's there. And when a policeman comes to pull you over, well, bad boy, bad boy, what you going to do? First thing I say to myself is, what am I going to do? Bring it on. That's just my natural reaction to anybody that say, what, if you don't do this, what are you going to do about it? Let me show you. That's my natural reaction. Because I, I was born in a free country. America is a free country built on morals and many other things. Okay. You, the, the, the network, the, who's ever behind all this uh, of the branding of cops and making the cops stars, here's where it gets difficult. When those policemen go back to the station after working a hard shift and protecting us, and I have all the respect in the world for them, but they're, they got a good old boy circle in there. You think when wrestlers come back to the dressing room, you think we're trying to hit each other with flamethrowers? You know, after a while, there's a good old boy system. And, but if you got a bunch of wrestlers in the dressing room, 20 of them, and an outsider comes in, it, mm, it becomes silent. I've lived it. The police, when they get back to their station, because the police are police with 24-7, they the only other friends they got is police, but they get hooked in and they got a good old boy system inside to protect each other, which they're told to do, back up. But over a long period of time, it turns, and the policemen themselves that are featured want to be on TV next. You cannot put a government institution on television and sensationalize it. That's wrong, and it's, I'm not saying it's a complete reason. I'm just saying this. You start there, and everybody in America has heard this stupid song, Bad Boys, What Are You Gonna Do? Everybody in America knows about it, and is lying there in the conscious, and when all these other terrible, terrible things happening, you need to put that card in. And you need to put that card into the network or wherever it comes. Because you know what, man? That is dead wrong. I got, why don't you put the Navy SEALs on? All the secret stuff they do. Why don't we follow them? Because you can't. Because they got a job to do. The policemen get paid. They got a job to do. You don't follow them around and make a television series out of them. Because it just grows animosity. All right. I don't want to, you know, again, no, no shooting policeman. You cannot do that. I don't give a damn how mad you are. That's why this is a free country. All right. Um, <laughs> so I'll go for them. I'll go from that. Here's a nice transition. Listen, at RowdyRoddyPiper.com, you can get your Hot Rod t-shirts, your villain t-shirts, uh, and a whole bunch of stuff. The website has just been recreated, and the graphic novel finally came out. It's sick, man. It, it looks so good. I'm not kidding you. You go to RowdyRoddyPiper.com. The bubble gum has finally come out. The uh, And then, of course, Rowdy Roddy Piper is all out of bubble gum. Soda Pop is out. It's in, like, Bevco, Rocket Fizz. I love the guys. Uh, there, I got so much stuff coming out. I'm just writing another book. Um, you know, but you can get most of your information from RowdyRoddyPiper.com or on my Twitter, R underscore Roddy underscore Piper, because some dick stole my name. I got to create that bullshit. You know, that, there's another thing just while I'm on it. You know, remember Mark Spitz, the great Olympian, the swimmer, and he went in a house where he let his guard down and trusted. And I guess he had a couple of puffs off a joint. And and some cowardly moron took the video, boom, it's up on TMZ. The guy loses all kinds of honor and cornflakes, whatever. You know what? The guy that filmed him, I want to see him too. 
You put that low life guy up there too. Cause he was <laughs> All right, all right, I hear you. But what you've heard now is nothing compared to what you're about to hear. I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna come back with Jake the Snake Roberts. It's very real. Nothing like uh, being in Manhattan. Wow. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you a funny one here. Uh, uh, downstairs, we're doing this gig, you know, and uh, a young lady with me is one of my daughters. You know, I've got eight kids, you know, four boys, four girls. Beautiful. And uh, she actually met you back in the day. And uh, she had been on the road with me, I guess. Oh, gosh, this is when I was doing a Rick Rude thing, you know, and, and Cheryl was with me. And so we're all on the road, and uh, Cody was like, I don't know, three. And yeah. one day we were coming to the building, and you went, well, hello, little girl, and where are you from? And she goes, Marriott. Because that's where we were staying all the time, right? <laughs> that's right. She thought we lived in Marriott. <laughs> so uh, we drive down the highway. She goes, Daddy, there's our house. <laughs> and she'd see a Marriott. And what a lovely yeah, house. <laughs> you know, but that just shows you, man, what we were going through at the time, man. You know, just yeah. hotel to hotel to hotel. And the kids are just, you know, flying yeah. by them too, man. You know, <laughs> Foof, Marriott. That's pretty Where are cool. you from, Marriott? Marriott? And so now your daughter is like your together. She's my booking agent, man. She, uh, she handles all my bookings and... Uh, you know, I had a lawyer doing it, and Jesus Christ, man, she took over, and uh, within within like six weeks, I think I've got a day off in August. <laughs> She's trying to you fucking know, kill me. Well, you know, you, you can't say no to her, yeah, right? right. <laughs> she trying to fucking she, kill she me. She lives with me, so I can't <laughs> lie to her. That is so cool. But she's got me uh, in all these comedy clubs. You know, I'm doing the comedy thing. Now. Are you doing the comedy? Yeah, man, and killing it. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to get with you because I'd love to do some shows together. I love it. She's getting me into the bigger clubs now. You know, 500 people, 700 people, and Atlantic City, Taj Mahal. Yeah. Yeah. The other night I did one in uh, New York City, and guess who opened for me? Macaulay Culkin. He You're opened for me. Yeah. That, that good, is man. fantastic. When did you kind of... When did you take an interest? In uh, I just I don't I, even know what we I call just, it. Spoken I, word? Yeah, I call it the unspoken word. Because Dallas said, dude, 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 you got to call it the spoken word. I went, you man? No, yeah. I'm going to call it the unspoken word. <laughs> it's the answers to all the questions you're afraid to ask Jake the Snake Roberts. There you go. There you go. Oh. You I, know, and how I many just, have you done? Uh, maybe eight. And I, got, I, I got two more this week. And um, oh my so God. So like, did she just... The she little, got oh, busy. Your daughter's first. Cody. Cody. Yeah. yeah. So Cody busy. picks up the phone and uh, she, calls no, club. No, she didn't. She uh, went to the email. You know, this damn paper trail these kids do now. You know, the, uh, what yeah. they call it. Uh, social media. Social media. There you go. And went after it like that. And my God, man, the response was just unbelievable. Oh, uh, I can, I'm, I'm I averaging no like two or three clubs a week. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. see, you for you, that um, forum, oh, people will flock. It's a game, man. It's so easy. I just it's go out. I tell yeah. five or six stories. You know, and I yeah. start them off. The first thing I say is, okay, let's get some st things straight off the get. Gotcha. I hate snakes. <laughs> I never have liked snakes. It was a stupid gimmick. <laughs> I, I come up with the damn name when I was smoking dope. Another reason to not do drugs, kids. There you go. You'll get yourself a bad gimmick, and people laugh at that, and we just go right on with it. You know, I tell them some of the snake experiences that happened, the bad yeah. things, you know, that happened. Yeah. You know, the stripper getting bitten by the tit, you know, in a strip joint, you know. You know. Do, do you, just while we're on snakes, do you remember in Chicago... And yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? Summer uh, no, the Survivor Series. Okay. That huge son of a bitch. So there's this huge crate, crate on wheels, right? Yep, yep, so yep. Tell me, tell me the story. Well, Vince, he wanted Hogan and Demolition to help me carry the snake. Yeah. And I thought to myself, that kills my gimmick. You know? 
Yeah. Right? Absolutely. It's okay, yours. So I'm not going to let this happen. Yeah. So I call Albert the Freak, <laughs> son of Charles Manson. Woof. And said, dude, I need something so big that it can't be carried. He goes, oh, no problem, bro. No problem. Because you didn't want to have no, the. Yeah. I'm not going to have it happen, brother. No, you going to kill my gimmick, Vince. I have four other. This I want Duh. to Yeah. Okay, so, Albert. Albert came up with Satan. <laughs> that damn thing was 26 feet long, man. 26. 375 pounds. Okay. Yeah. So, you yeah. open the. It came away, well, actually busted the crate open itself. Oh, it did, did it? Yeah, we started prying the lid off, and he kind of knocked the lid off, and then it came out, and we all hauled ass, and Albert <laughs> le leapt on it like a friggin' idiot, man, and the snake picked him up and slammed him on the concrete. Albert, our snake handler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Albert gets gets slammed. It's only the snake picks him up, ba boom <laughs> but he didn't let go. And we're all running, and Vince is going, enough, enough, into that. Tell the snake save, you know. save my gimmick. <laughs> but how did you get? Because I I've got this memory of two it, or three guys. It took guys, several Night people. Maybe, yeah, it took several people to, to get, get it back the in. Thing back I in wasn't the... one of them. Oh God! No, 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 no. You know, I think I was busy. <laughs> you know? well, I remember Albert, the snake handler, and and you know my love yeah, of snakes. I so. know, I know. I remember a pistol you had, <laughs> Charlotte. <laughs> Please tell the story. Yeah. Well, <laughs> freaking Bob Orton, I think, is going to set me up for that. Roddy loves snakes, Jake. <sighs> and I remember taking that damn thing over to you, and you were in, in your briefcase or something, going through something. And I tapped, and you turned around, man, and that freaking snake was there. And you shot to that briefcase, and, man, that pistol came up so quick. And I'm thinking to myself, Orton, I hate you, you know. Yeah, 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 that was the quickest I ever put the snake away. Yeah. I'm so scared. Oh, I know. Well, so am I. I'm terrified of them. You never know it. Hey, for money, what will we do? Everything. For that. <laughs> Heidi, <laughs> Heidi Fleiss has yeah. nothing on us. Yeah, 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 I know a guy that painted his face half color one time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Black. Wait, that was you. Never mind. Never Sorry, bro. Right. Sorry. Right. In the wrong paint, too. <laughs> oh, and then they... You know, then Andre the Giant and Arnie threw out the solution to take the black paint oh off. My God. I had to go. I know you went to the airport or something, didn't you? I went from Toronto, Canada oh, via Chicago to Portland, Oregon, oh. half black. You're lucky you didn't get killed or something. Oh, like with a four foot Mickey yeah, Mouse and an yeah. Albert. I tell you, you know, they oh. get out of your way. Yeah. <laughs> But, I, yeah. And God we just God. wanted to go home, man. So we just it, wanted to go home. Here's one that I remember that I don't think I'd have had the courage to do it. You um, were working with uh, Randy Savage, Macho uh, Man. Yeah. And I remember Macho Man getting tied up in the ropes. Yeah, the cobra bite him. And, the co and yeah, I mean the yeah, cobra. Yeah, it chewed on him. It chewed on him. Yeah, I love that, man. I still Love get it. wood, yeah. I watch the tape. If I'm with a girl, I watch the tape, then I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. I still get wood. Yeah, 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 I do. I'm ashamed of it. Look at, look at that. And you had, of course. Yeah, but see, you don't know the whole story there, see? No. Nah. Mm. Tell me, tell I'm me. going to give it to you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Randy came to me and he goes, So, brother, uh, we're going to do the sneak thing tonight, you know? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, you know, there's a lot of people around that like to have the macho man spot. I'm like, what? You know, no telling what they might do. Maybe the snake's venom sacks have been removed, and maybe they haven't. So he's accusing me of going to latch him up to a poisonous snake and kill him and take his spot. <laughs> take his spot. I don't know how much time I'd have done in jail for that, but... <laughs> He, he forgot that part. He, and he's, yeah, he, he was, was a like, little intense. Oh, yeah, he was. He was. He was, yeah. he was a little, you know. Yeah. But God bless him. But anyway. Yeah. He says, well, here's the way it's going to go down. <laughs> You're going to let the snake bite you first. What? So I had to go over in the fucking locker room, hike my fucking pant leg up, and get the snake to bite me first. So it bites me. 
He's like, they don't fucking move. Don't move. Don't pick up nothing. Don't drink no solutions. Don't drink no antidotes and shit. You know, stay right there, brother. Stay right there. No, 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 bro. He made me sit there for 30 minutes, man. And then he started doing this. Then fuck with your head. I'm like, well, yeah, a little bit. Throwing his fingers yeah, in your eyes. In eyes. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe the fucking snake's poison's in you. <laughs> oh, I know, dude. <laughs> So finally, after I didn't die, he says, okay, we'll do the gimmick. <laughs> but then he told me on the way to race, he says, hey, brother, once it lets go of me, come back to me, because I may want you to hook him back up, because I want this fucking angle to get over. You get me? I'm like, oh, don't worry, motherfucker. Don't you <laughs> dare worry. Yeah, yeah. So in the ring, I got the snake. I turned my back to him, and I paintbrushed that snake, bro. I slapped the piss out of it, man. So when I turned around, it was ready to chew on somebody's ass. You slapped him hard. You know, oh, yeah, I knocked the dog shit out of him. <laughs> you know, and then he bit into it, man, and he's chewing, he's chewing. Well, Vince, since you down, and, and you being, you know, Roddy, afraid of snakes, Roddy, you're like 15 feet away. Get the snake off of me, Vince said so. And then Vince said, well, Jesus Christ, did Jay probably can't even hear Roddy. So he sent Elizabeth down. Remember, he said, Liz down. And you got Liz in front of you. <laughs> I was the great uh, savior. <laughs> I, listen, I just did that as a gentleman. Oh, yeah, oh, Let the lady go first. Absolutely. <laughs> ah, I get you totally there, bro. But, you know, like, it shows back then oh, yeah. where all our heads were at. Because oh. when you watch it, like, that that snake on Randy's arm. Oh, it was no one on it. It was now, cool. When the snake, when you had the yeah, show right. on the ankle, yeah, how bad. much did it hurt? One no, I didn't. See, that was, that was the thing nobody knew, man. Um, pythons have fangs, and they're long, you yeah. know, like this. And they're curled because it's for holding something, grabbing a hold. That way they can't get away. See? Gotcha. And then they wrap the body around you, squeeze you till you die, and then they swallow you. It's a pleasant way to go. Oh, you don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but a cobra just has teeth like a, like a catfish. Just spiny little shit. Doesn't hurt at all. So a cobra to get his poison into you, he has to gnaw on you. Because that's, oh. that's what generates the, the poison into his saliva and gets into your system. So, so I he mean, has to gnaw on you. Yeah, he's got to gnaw on you, man. Is he like... He just keeps Pulled chewing, and keeps chewing, and keeps chewing, and then the, then the poison will come through his saliva. So, I mean, back in those days when I was being a bad boy, I used to get that damn cobra in the hotel room, man, put him on the bed, you know, yeah. and cobras are real slow. See, that's, you know, they hood up and they stand up, right? Oh, and they, here's, here's how fast they strike, like that. So, you can do this real easy. So, you can get your own. Oh, yeah, there. easy, oh. man, easy. But a python. It will strike you so fast you can't even see it. Really? Oh, yeah. Moving. You don't even see it move. What the fuck? It didn't bite me. Yeah, I did. Look at that. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it. Well, I'll tell you a story about that here in a minute. Yeah. So, I used to get in a hotel room and do that shit. And then, of course, the phone would ring. And I, hello? <laughs> God damn you, motherfucker. You got me. God damn you. You scared the shit out of me right now. <laughs> I know. I got you. But, yeah, as, as far as, as the snake being so fast, we were in... Uh, but just, just a second before you do, like, so what kind of what snake was it that bit Randy? It was a cobra. It, it was cobra. a cobra. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it takes its time yeah, to get its food. Yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah. I mean, like, how much Doesn't time? Hurt. Doesn't hurt. Uh, I don't know. I didn't ever time it. <laughs> you know, because the, the snake had been fixed. They removed the venom sacs and filled it with silicone. Oh. Uh, yeah, there was, there was no, no chance of it hurting anybody. So it's kind of like having your nuts snipped. I don't know about that either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that too. <laughs> My nuts are in a jar at home. Uh, the ex-wife has them. She lets me see them you know, year Holy to year. Cow. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> so, uh, so then with Randy the, and the... Yeah, it could have chewed on him forever. And, it wouldn't and the actual punctures were just, just getting like, stapled. Like, yeah, like uh, sandpaper. Didn't hurt. Uh, okay. Didn't hurt. Cause, 
It well, freaks, it, now I'll tell you what, it freaks you out when you look at something chewing on your arm. It you bugs with your head a little bit, you know. <laughs> something chewing. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you will get your attention. Yeah, yeah, you might wake up and say, excuse me. <laughs> get the next taxi out of here. You know, that always has been something I went like. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how we I got it passed on television. Or I don't know, that. nor would I have the balls to let that thing gnaw. Yeah, well, I, I, obviously I did, but yeah. know, all of his balls just uh, <laughs> just greed, you know. Yeah. I, okay, so I'm with Albert, and you know, as afraid as I am of snakes, I remember one time Albert had this snake in the shower, mm. and somehow whatever I got in, and I. Like, you know, being the brave man I am, you know, 160 <laughs> yards away. <laughs> but I'm watching Albert, and he's slapping it on oh, the yeah, head. He fucks with him, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's... But the snake got him on oh, the yeah. finger. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to exaggerate. I'm not sure, but like within, I think, five seconds, the biggest, blackest looking finger. Mm. I mean, the black was yeah, instant. Boom. Yeah. I don't so, know what kind of snake it was, man. Well, you know, he, he got said, bit by some poisonous ones, too, you know. Well, he said to me that he had been bit so much mm. that, mm. you know, his about... His system had been built up against it. Yeah, yeah but for yeah. those like myself that have never even yeah. seen something like that, I, it left, obviously, yeah, quite he an was impression. A, he was a messed up dude, you know. I mean, was he? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, he, he went to a... Oh, man, that guy. He went to... A, do a Boy Scout thing, you know? You know, explain, Albert? Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. snake handler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he went He went to uh, Boy Scouts to show them, you know, in the woods, you're in the woods, you know, respect other animals and stuff, yada, yada, yada. And, yeah. he's, and he's got a rattlesnake there, you know? And he's messing with this rattlesnake. Albert had no fear, man. He was just nuts. But anyway, he's messing around with this thing. He's like, you know, just respect it. Always keep your eye. Oh, Joe, Joe, Joe. Okay, okay, okay. Here's what you need to do, guys. Somebody dial 911. <laughs> right now, I need to be really calm. I need to be calm because uh, the faster my heart beats, the, the blood will get you know, push the poison through my system and uh, I could die. So I need to keep calm. If, if I smoked, I would light a cigarette right now because cigarette will bring your heart rate down in about six kids. Hey, I got one, you know. The boy got some cigarettes, <laughs> right? right? There you go. Pack on a pell yeah. eh? Yeah. Wow, so he got bit right there, man. And, and uh, well, how he, close? How close? He got in trouble, man, because. Uh, it was a Mexican rattlesnake, and uh, they don't like have, white guys. They have different antidotes for different venoms. So guess what? There's not much Mexican rattlesnake antidote in in America in in um, in, in Hartford, you know, in Stanford. So he nearly died. He nearly died, man. Uh, I remember going to the hospital and seeing him, and all the white capillaries had burst in his eyes. And uh, they wound up having to trim the meat off of one finger. He's just like got like a bone there now with no no meat on it, you know. So yeah. okay, so let's take it like I make up eighteen forty. The yeah. cowboy yeah. and his horse yeah. walking. There's a rattlesnake. Yeah. He gets. Is he a done deal? No, he's not a done deal. It depends on well, it depends on where he bites him. You know, he's got to cut it and suck that poison out. You know. That's the old joke, man. Yeah, it's Tonto. Yeah. What do they say? You're going to die. <laughs> yeah, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No. Okay. No. So, but depends on where he bites. Where he bites, and that's where you get the, you make the X with the, the X. holes and suck the poison out. Wow. Uh, most of the time, you're going to get really, really sick. Gotcha. But I don't want to get really sick, man. <laughs> no. I don't even want to get a little bit sick. No, I've no. been sick. No. Yeah. Matter of fact, I still am yeah, very yeah, safe. Mentally, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, give you so thank you. You were going to talk to me about. I remember a time about. Uh, oh, no, I yeah, I got you. Um, Brain trying, um We were talking about well, Albert another, slapping. Another him. time with Albert. Oh, Savage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Savage. Savage. There you go. We were in. Uh, in your Fresno or I love this San shit. Jose. I love the shit out of you, man. I don't know. I love this shit. And uh, Mike, the referee. Yeah. Would come in the locker room and uh, uh, Savage is like, hey, Jake, uh, you know it's fucking Mike's birthday today. <laughs> okay, fine. You know, he's like, 
But uh, you know he's afraid of snake. Don't you think it's about time we get him over his fear? <laughs> and I'm, I still haven't connected. You know, I was tired. You know, what, what the fuck you want me to do, Randy? Yeah. And he hooks him from behind. Hooks, hooks Mike. Get the snake, Jake. Let's get him over this bullshit fear. <laughs> so I go for the bag. Yeah. Mike's fighting like a motherfucker. You know, <laughs> understandable. Understandable. So as I come at him with the snake, he kicks me in the fucking nuts. <laughs> Head butts Randy, and we all three go down. As we go down, Mike says, Oh my God, he got me, he got me, he got me, he got me. He got me right in fucking pots. Oh my God, my face, my face. We're like, Bullshit. He didn't fucking bite. You were watching, man. Bullshit, he didn't bite me. Move your fucking hand, move your hand. He moves his hand, and there's fucking fang marks here and fang marks here. Bit him right in the fucking eye, man. He did bite him. Yeah. yeah. So he gets up and runs out of the locker room. I'm like, Fuck, man. I felt like shit, right? Yeah. Macho's like, oh, Jake, you shouldn't have done that. I'm like, oh, fuck you, Randy, you dick. <laughs> right? Well, here's where it gets funny. <laughs> this is actually funny. I'm looking for Mike again. Find him. I'm like, fuck, man. Vince going to fire my fucking ass for this bullshit or what? I'm like, fuck, man. I can't believe I did that. He's a nice guy. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So finally, I find him right before the match starts. I'm like, Mike, here goes, Jay, please, please don't tell me. It's not you'll fire me. I'm like, what? Randy told me, Randy told me what I did to the snake. I'm like, well, what the fuck did you do this? Like, what? what? Randy told me I messed the snake psyche up. What? He convinced Mike that because a snake, once it strikes you, he must eat you or the cycle is not complete. <laughs> so by him getting away and not being eaten, the snake's hunting psyche has been derailed. And now he will starve to death and die. And these snakes, cost, it costs thousands of dollars for Vince to train these snakes. <laughs> Randy, convinced Randy convinced him, man. And so he's the snakes chasing him right out of his psyche. He's got to eat him, right? Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. were some good days, man. Weren't they? You know. Those were great days, but You know, everybody, you know, some guys are sour about this business and stuff, but you know what, man? We were there at the grandest of the grand, man. You know, and yeah. what we did with it, yeah, we had a crazy-ass schedule, but I'm so proud I made it. I'm so proud that I was part of it. Did I make it? No, we never make enough money, man. Do no. I wish that? I'd, yeah, sure, I wish. You know, yeah. Hindsight's twenty twenty, man, and uh, I'm just so grateful that I was one of the ones that was picked to make that run. Like that, yeah, you know, because you know, no WWF, matter what, they can't take it away from me, man. That WWF run, oh, brother, you know, it is shit time beef. that nobody can never be believed. No, and what was the best part of it was. And I spoke with this before. Is like you came in, you were already packaged. You had done your homework. You had done your dues. You were packaged. Yeah, yeah. You just bring Jake into a territory. Tell him the Let time, him yeah. and he knew what. To, yeah. um, we knew Marco. Yeah, yeah, Don yeah. All these guys. All these guys. Yeah. Everybody was packaged. Nobody had to do anything except leave us alone. Yes. And but they couldn't do that. <laughs> I remember. Uh, oh, it was so sweet, man. When, yeah, it, there was you know no the arguing. the no W arguing. no the WWF were the real gunslingers. Oh my God, man, that was so sweet. And and I, you you couldn't throw when it came to getting in the ring. There was nobody there that you could throw off. Right. They knew. Knew what It to was do. all professionals. Yeah. You know, it uh, from top to bottom, man. From top, you to had bottom. guys at the bottom that were main event anywhere else. Absolutely, you know, they were yeah, great man. stuff. Great Sweet, stuff. Man. Yeah, I I remember. Uh, <laughs> so, um, the Heart Foundation, uh, Dynamite Kid, oh God, yeah, and uh, Boy. Davey Boy, thank you, and Jimmy Hart. So they were, uh, excuse me. Um, Dynamite Kid and Dave, Dave, Danny Boy, is it? Davey Boy. Davey Boy, thank you. 
they were going to go against, I guess, Nyhard and uh, the Hart Foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy was the manager. Yeah. So, like, Matilda, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I got to tell you what I did to Matilda, too. I did, a bad, I did a bad thing to Matilda. What'd you do? Well, <laughs> fucking Davey Boy, he was a dick, you know. Yeah. He was a dick. Yeah, he was honest. Oh, so is, was man. the Dynamite Kid. Dynamite was, but he let Davey Boy stir him. And he, Davey Boy was a shit creator. And then See, Dynamite was the hammer that came in and fucking ended it. Because Davey Boy went to fight. Rizzo's. Yeah, uh, Davey Boy, well, that's the reason Dynamite got cold cocked. Because Davey Boy stirred the shit, got it going. And then Dynamite made the corner and he got blasted. And took him out. Yeah, man, knocked his fucking teeth out. So, I, so, so Davey, Davey Boy, Boy was he stirred the shit. Yeah, man. He, Davey Boy that. would go stir shit and then go back and tell Dynamite, hey, you know what they said about you, Tommy? You're kidding. Oh, no, no. He's a real badass piece of shit, man. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so but it, what it is, got until that. Yeah, so what had happened was is I walked in the locker room one night and called Davey Boy, who did not smoke, getting the cigarettes from Dynamite and throwing them inside the snake bag. So the snake would be pissed off and bite me. Oh, really funny. No. Not funny. Not funny. So I said, okay, motherfuckers. A couple of nights later, you know, I'm not the type of guy that would do revenge. <laughs> but I did see a hungry like dog. Me. And you know, those those hot dogs at a wrestling show is not the best thing to feed an animal. <laughs> you know, especially seven or eight of them with chili. Oh. And it looked like chocolate to me, but it may have been X Lax. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I loaded that motherfucker up. And then oh brother, I timed this shit. They took it back to the hotel, dogs. Rrr, rrr, rrr. He wanted to go outside, man. Do you think they wanted to take him outside? Fuck that fucking dog. They're going to the bar. I go over to the room, I go. Dog, rrr, rrr. <laughs> Hear him spray that shit. And I let him cool down. Arr, arr, <laughs> yeah, I go back to the door and hammer on it again. Arr, arr, <laughs> <laughs> and he's fucking coating her whole room in shit. Oh, yeah. Classic. Oh, yeah. It was great, man. I mean, I'm outside in the fucking. <laughs> heard, I heard him come in about 2 o'clock. Fucking motherfucking dog, you fucking piece of shit. You have no idea. Shit all over the fucking beds. No idea. No, no, I did it. No, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's a pro. Duh. You know, man, Fuji. <laughs> Fuji. Yeah. Right? We are both Absolutely. a graduate of the Absolutely. Fuji school. respect him mostly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I never fucked with anybody unless they fucked with me. I, mean, I didn't, I didn't like have that. time for it. No, and you know what? I, I'm not a ribber. No. I don't no. like it. I'm boom business. And please don't touch my stuff. Yeah, I don't, don't, don't ever fuck with my shit. Please. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. I don't do I just. Yeah. You're right. I didn't yeah. have time for yeah. it. Yeah. And if I had some time, I would have rather sat down with, like, my brother, you, and talked and yeah, laughed business, or whatever. Whatever, man. You whatever know, it was. But. Yeah, but the mean bullshit that uh, some of the guys did, I mean, and they, those two guys were the worst, man. They would... I remember that poor kid in Pennsylvania, man. They are shooting him with air and shooting him with steroids and stuff. The, the mentally retarded. Yeah. Guy. You know. Yeah. Boy, that guy is, boy, yeah. Boy, shit, man. That's right. Drug, you know, giving him halcyons and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. You that type that. of shit is just wrong. It's just wrong. I mean, I'll, I'll admit it was pretty funny when they halcyon fucking Outback Jack. In L.A.? Yes. Uh, and he's the, masturbating please. on the phone to, to, <laughs> okay. to stew. So let's pick it up at the beginning there, right? <laughs> it was actually San Francisco. It was a Frisco. Yeah, yeah, it was a Marriott. Okay, okay. so Outback Jack. Oh, he, well, he, he kind of asked for it. He's like, I can fucking drink anything you just put under the table. Grab that Australian. Okay, here you go, you stupid bitch. You had to say that. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> and here they go to the bar. And, of course, <laughs> he turned his head. Do that. Turn his head. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it <laughs> is. Halcyons. Uh, the next thing, they're in the room. He's buck naked. He thinks he's talking to his girlfriend in Australia. And he's actually masturbating talking to Stu Hart. <laughs> uh, 
and then oh, baby then they Jesus. told him that his food was ready at the restaurant downstairs, and he just walked down there buck ass naked. He didn't fucking know he didn't have no clothes on. Yeah, that wasn't good. And they they were nice. They didn't take him to jail. They, they brought him back to room. Then the next morning, they found his crocodile head in the parking lot. The Davy boy cut it off the fucking back of his jacket. You know uh, why you do that? Man? Yeah. Even like you know, Halcyon and yeah, it's, it's no, it's not cool, man. It's not. Because what if I had one winning? What if he had kicked? I got family. What if I kill some fucking broad? He had family. Yeah. You no, know, well, you don't do that shit. Man. The Fuji School, it was for defense. Right, 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 right. It was right, self-defense. Right, right, right. right. Uh, they were, you know, yeah, what? they, they were bullies. Yeah, they, they, absolutely. They were they wouldn't do short it. guys yeah. that had a fucking issue. Yes, sir. Napoleon. Yeah. Right. A little and, bit. And uh, they, wanted, they were better than everybody else. Yeah. And you motherfuckers couldn't hold a candle to us. And they were on fourth match, and they didn't like it. Because they didn't have the talent to be on last. And that's the truth. Man, it was a tag team. So, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Matilda. Oh, like, yeah. Shit. You know, I don't know. The animal lovers aren't going to like this. I but, felt bad about it. No, real bad. So, Morocco gets it right. No, Matilda. I, I, every time all the guys would come. Uh, you know, I come from the restaurant. I had a half a piece of steak. And a, oh yeah, I bring the dog. Matilda, the dog, everybody. Well, dog like a dog with four hundred pounds, man, <laughs> and it's a bull dog. Yeah. And a belly yeah. ate yeah. the ground, man. So, uh, Morocco gets me, and we find out that they're going to work a program with a heart foundation, so dynamite, and they got that dog. And I don't know how many shots that dog may have received for. Ladies, or <laughs> okay, but booster, they, they probably, booster shots, yeah, yeah, booster shots, yes, yeah. with the flu, and yeah, but you yeah. could probably bench press about five, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm with Morocco, I'm going, I'm, what are you doing? Come here, come here, watch the door. And he would sneak Jimmy Hart's, um, what do you call it, the, the thing, bullhorn, bullhorn, and he said, Watch the door. So, I'm in there with Matilda and Morocco, I'm on the door, and he'd pull it and make it. The, like the sound back that way yeah. like every night I don't like know. two weeks like, now you know there's something wrong when you're in the ring and all the boys <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yes. and there's jimmy hart and that jimmy that dog come in yeah. belly like you said drag yeah. out, and he sees that oh. megaphone and went nuts <laughs> And Jimmy Hart spent the next six months on trying to save his life. Yeah, up on top of the pole. Literally, <laughs> Wait, you know, he, he got he got slick. He got slick. You know about that? No. Oh yeah, he got slick. Oh, tell me. He didn't, the dog did not like black people. Gotcha. And he got slick, and slick fell fell off the ring and broke his arm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was Davy and him sick in the morning. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was funny, but it's not nice. <laughs> it's not nice. No. <laughs> they, we thought that just that I, Jimmy could escape. <laughs> yeah, well, Jimmy's he just one of the biggest ladies. Oh, yeah, Jimmy's a little chicken twerp anyway. I mean, he, he's the fastest son of a bitch on the planet. <laughs> yes, he I is. mean, he gets to the airport two hours before anybody. Yeah. Right? Right? Yes, he does. The oh. most nervous guy on the planet. Holy cow. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, he was fast. You listening to Jake the Snake is dark. You should have been in the room with him. Just uh, then again, that's kind of like the pot calling the kettle black, you know. Ah, uh, my little girl's in her second year of college. She's going to become a doctor, preferably a psychiatrist, so she can figure out her old man. <laughs> and uh, holy cow, WrestleMania was WrestleMania. They, uh, you want to buy new stuff, presents for your friends. Go to RowdyRowdyPiper.com. Also, Villain Network. I'm, I'm doing such cool stuff these days. Villain Network, man. <laughs> We're putting stuff up there that you can't find anywhere. You go to VillainNetwork.com on YouTube. Uh, there's a version of Villain Network on YouTube.com or VillainNetwork.com. Check that out. Another thing I'm doing. 
Uh, the soda pop, you can get it in Bevmo, Rocket Fizz, Rowdy Rowdy Pipers, all out of bubble gum. You can actually get the bubble gum, you know, but like when you spit it out and you're all out, remember, everybody, get out of the way. If I got no bubble gum, it's going to be a bad day for you. Um, let me see what else you got going on. Oh, heavens. I just did two movies. Uh, one, The Chair, and the other, Portal to Hell. Uh, and, you know, I, I would like to thank the Academy for uh, well, a little, you know, not putting as hell comes to Frogtown <laughs> as a nominee. <laughs> I never thought anybody would watch the damn thing. I took the money. <laughs> Sold like a million copies. Really? <laughs> I was just telling the story. I, I, I'll tell you the story, man. And then I, uh, we go back to Jake. Uh, so, hey, RoddyRoddyPiper.com, Villain Network, all, all, all that kind of stuff. We're reinventing, getting uh, They Live masks for you, uh, anything that you want, baby's clothing. You know, it, it's hot. It's hot, Rod. Okay, so listen, I'm, I'm shooting Hell Comes to Frog Down, right? And, uh, you know, I'm about the middle of the shoot. I think the shoot was like four weeks. And I'm in the middle of the desert with the chastity belt on that they zap my nuts if I run too far. It's like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and so uh, halfway through the, sh uh, the shoot, we're way out in the desert. Here comes, you can see the dust, like the Apaches are coming <laughs> from, from a mile away. And it's the dust from a beautiful long black limousine. A and my, my wife is 4'11 and a half and 100 pounds. So, you know, she needs a big limousine. <laughs> anyway, I see the limousine coming. Now, it just happened to be the scene uh, in Hell Comes to Frogtown, which I hope you don't go back and watch, uh, where Sandal Bergman is doing the ching-ching dance of the, I don't know, seven snakes, you know, half hard, half barred, I don't know, and she's in the genie outfit, and she's ching-ching and doing the scene for Toadie, the big frog. <laughs> uh, so, my wife finally gets there, it's lunchtime, right? And I come in, oh, hello, my dear, I've missed you so much, you know, and we're eating movie food, and all of a sudden, my trailer door whips open, and Sandal Bergman in the genie outfit walks right into my trailer, looks over at my wife and me and says, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were going to have company today. Really? She'd never been in my trailer before. Really? So she turns around as the lady sandal, as the lady she is, and closes the door. I turn around and look. There's Satan. Ha! I know what Satan looks like. Boom! Right into the eyes. Well, huh. I would rather you hear Jake the Snake than have to hear the pain I went through after that. Uh, um, now, I, again, I'm not. I love. I love to laugh and have fun. Uh, I want to say this is not. This is as real as it come, and uh, I don't think it's for kids. Um, I got Jake the Snake coming after the break. Uh, I'll let you decide on your own. We'll take a break. We're back with the snake. When, when did uh, you, Jake, when did you, what was your entrance into the WWF, the first one? Well, well, too. 82? No, WrestleMania 2. WrestleMania 2. Yeah, I worked with George Wells, yeah. Walking George. Yeah, man. Ooh, Walking George. That whole Joe's <sighs> Newark Airport. <laughs> yeah. Holy I got another the creepy he's just thinking about. Yeah, we, then, then the Franklin. Oh, <laughs> the Franklin. Buddy Rose. Oh, that? my God. Buddy Rose would be coming down. Everybody's door. Well, buddy, what do you need? He'd go right to the sink. Yeah. To, uh, what are you doing? So Getting a screen. Up, getting a screen. Yeah. And he's, <laughs> finally, they had to kick him off because his roof burned down. <laughs> you know, burn more. Oh, my God. The thing that Walking George would. He would take machines apart. 
the coat machine. He would pull it out. He'd, I got the steps to mine the coat machine on the fifth floor. And he'd pull it out and, he'd, and he would take the TVs apart. Do you know that? I did not. He'd take the whole television apart. <laughs> he, had some, he had to do something. He had to fucking you know, Is that or walk? <laughs> right. Right. He took the TV right. apart. Right. George, I was telling a story about George being in Hawaii and with Rick Martel. And so Rick's driving, man. and they're going to go um, skydiving for the first time. So Rick tells me, you know, Rick, the, Rick the model, Mark. Yeah, Martin, I love you. Oh, great guy. He's my brother. You know, real good guy. So he, he picks up uh, George and gets in the car, and George pulls out this cigar <laughs> joint and lights it up. And Rick goes, Monsieur, we're about to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> I am not sure this is time for that. <laughs> so, you know, Rick, being kind of sensible, didn't do it. And I, boom, they get up in that plane and they both jump out. And George forgets, you know, and ends up landing in a tree and it goes into the branch, no. sticks inside him. Now wow. he's got to work. Wow. So, and if, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you stick the cigar in there? <laughs> He's trying to bandage it off, and he goes oh, there, my like God. one, two nights, and finally he I goes. I didn't know that. Oh, oh, oh I missed going. all the good stuff. <laughs> no. Well, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know. Uh, did you see the guy the other day on ESPN that jumped out of the plane, and just as he jumped, he went into epileptic seizure? No. Yeah, man. Like, you know, seizure, you know, boom. And he's going down, and the guy that's been playing with him jumps out, shh, catches him, tries to rip it, can't do it. He goes back again the second time, and boom, saved his life, man. Yeah, man. Holy cow. Unbelievable. They show something, just a little bit of going on TV with this guy, he, like he's tries difficult things, and he got himself all dolled up to get eaten by a snake did you <laughs> no okay so i don't know who the guy is easy <clears throat> but this you know he puts together all the calculations oh got some, some kind of special suit breathing apparatus you know okay <laughs> be swallowed by a snake guess what and he wants to get eaten hey, by shit. the snake uh, yeah and so <laughs> you know you guys gotta look at the story does he I'm wrestle <laughs> <laughs> does he want to <laughs> Wow. And so I guess, you know, the, the snake came around and wrapped around them, started, you know, we squeeze it. Yeah, they, little right. breath goes out, squeezing yeah, Finally gets just the head on his head. He's going, tap it around. Give me, give me out, give me. And they're just watching them. Yeah. <laughs> Must be part of the, part show. Of the show. <laughs> wow. And apparently, that was. He couldn't even. That was it. They they had to get him out. He couldn't. Wow. You know. Well, oh, that's insane. I can. Can you imagine being in Africa no, 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 no. and walking along the path, no, no, no. and one of those things falls down oh, on you? <laughs> well, you know how they catch him over there. No. Oh, bro. You talk about a shitty job. <laughs> Over there, the, the, they'll, the, the, they'll, the, they'll come the, into the a village. The rooster wasn't the shittiest job. No, 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 no. <laughs> they'll come into a village and eat kids. The snakes will. So, okay. well, one of the ways they catch them is they put posts down on the ground and put a lid over this thing and they put a pig inside. Well, the snake comes in and swallows the pig, but now he's too big to get back out. Because of the bars, right? Yeah. Oh. Right. So he's too big. But if that don't do it, they've got the man way. <laughs> the man way. They find a big snake hole, right? Oh. And they kill a chicken, and they wrap the guy's leg in a burlap you know, material. And they squirt the blood all over the burlap. Then he goes over and sticks his leg down in the hole. Are you shouldn't No, no. The snake will swallow it. But when he gets up to here, he can't go anywhere else. <laughs> then they grab the guy and they pull the guy and the snake and everything out. That's a shitty fucking job, man. They're, yeah, 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 they do that, man. 
Holy hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm getting a nibble. I'm getting a nibble. <laughs> I'm getting a nibble. Oh, wait, wait, good, good, good. Hey, guys, come on back. Come on back. No, you only laid back. Ah, damn it. Come on back. Yeah, yeah. So the snake eats the leg. Yeah, but he can't get past the wire. See? God, and snakes yeah. can't regurgitate. They can't throw up. And they get them on, and then other. They pull it up. Hurt on the leg? I don't know, brother. I haven't been there. I have not. You, you don't You're see no. Sure, I do not. You don't, do that. <laughs> you don't see no blood on my leg. Well, yeah, man. Wow, I, I was the. Um, I love the Civil War and oh. and Ken Burns stuff. And I just, in along with this, I was listening to cowboys that used to drive cattle. Oh man! And I, I'm like. How insane the hell did they do? And listen to this one, what they thought, what they, they said was, you know, as you're there, you know, you don't have a change of clothing. No, no, no. And you know, Freak. you're all okay, and you're all whatever. And when it really got bad, they used, <laughs> oh, brother. Really got bad. When it really got bad, they used to pull their pants down, and then they could, and they'd sit on an anthill and yeah. let the ants eat, the eat up all the stuff. <laughs> Let go! I don't know. Eat up, you know. Clean them on up. There. I don't it's like really, yeah, really. On. Soap and water's a lot easier. Oh, oh baby, Jesus. you know. I'm going like, and I yeah, never thought yeah, about it. Before. But I guess when you think about it, there's ways to do everything. I guess you I know suppose what I mean? we. Follow, yeah. follow the buzzards, right? <laughs> follow the buzzards. You know, you know. Somebody asked me, you know, back in the day. Because they've got GPS and all this mm, stuff, you know. Yeah. We don't know how you guys got around. We don't well, either. If we were trying, <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, if we were trying to find the airport, we would look in the Where's sky the where the planes were coming sure. down, sure. and we headed that sure. way. Sure. There's another way. We Excuse me, where are the matches? Yeah, <laughs> common sense, right? Yeah. I mean, well, common that's, sense. that's what's wrong with America today, man. No common sense. Our, our kids can't even do math. They can't you go go to a store, and the computer shuts down. They cannot count you change, because they've never had to, for a dollar. Uh, my bill is my bill is fifty one cents. Give me forty nine back. I don't know, sir. I don't know. It's fifty one. How do you know that? How do you know? <laughs> so unless it punches up in the machine, forty nine, they don't get it. Forty nine cents back. Well, forty nine. I got it. But to do math, they can't do it. So I got a niece, and she goes, and she's 16, and she's had a car, and she comes and down, and the, the, the lock, the doors are locked. And, you know, she tries to open it with the thing, you know, push the button and stuff, and wouldn't you know it, everything was just wouldn't open, so she called home. I don't know what I'm going to do. Use the key. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Put the they key in. No common sense that's a true story this is sad man they she pushed the open i guess the yeah, this system goes down we're in a world full of idiots that can't wipe their ass you know <sighs> it's true brother it's true gps's oh, calculator you're dependent upon a machine to do everything for you. What about Amazon? And Amazon have androids that are gonna. How the hell are they not gonna hit everybody? Yeah, 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 yeah. We well, got cars that park themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and not on a railroad track. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shot. <laughs> shot. <laughs> what a night. Oh, what a night. <laughs> Holy cow. What a night. Yes, sir. You're right. Uh, in the fridge. You're right there, sir. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, yeah, it's scary, man. The kids today, man. You got the man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love any grandkids. Man? I have three grandkids. I've got nine. Yeah, yeah it's great. Nine. I want to ask you a question that I I don't know the answer to, but you will. Uh, my son Colt. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right, I love him. He's my best friend. Sure. But Jake, what was it like growing up? And my dad, your daddy. Me. 
being so popular, feel with everyone. Brutal. So, like, when you go to school. Brutal. Brutal, man. Like, what? Where are there phony fucking wrestlers, man? And you stand up for your dad and you're taking ass kickings and the verbal abuse and, you know, and any piece of dirt that comes out on you, man, and especially with the internet the way it is today, man. Whoa. They know everything, man. And if they don't, they just add something into it. I can't imagine. Oh, being, you see, you know, we didn't have the social media. No, we you. didn't. But it was still brutal on me, man, because, you know, my dad didn't raise me. So it's like, yeah, your dad don't even love you, man. Your dad's a star and won't even take, you know, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're wearing, your, your clothes are, aren't even real clothes. Uh, your grandmother makes them out of the curtains from the fucking hotels and shit. Because that's what she did. She hand sewed me clothes, you know. Clothes of many colors. Yeah, man. Oh, it was man. brutal. It was brutal, yeah, man. Didn't love you anymore. He just didn't give a shit, man. My dad was a motherfucker, man. A child molested son of a bitch, man. Molested his own daughters, man. And I got tossed around too, man, you know. And um, how did you, what age did you part from that? Well, I, I went back and got more, you know. Um, no, because you didn't know what to do. I just, I wanted to be loved. I wanted yeah. my dad to be proud of me. And he just, you know, that wasn't him, man. You know, for whatever reason, that's just the way it was. Um, Were the, you ever the molestation like close molest to your dad? No, 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 I, I, I used to be so hard. It's like, well, even whenever I went on the road, everybody's like, oh, Grizzly's such a great guy. I'm like, hey, you don't know that motherfucker. You don't know that he's screwing his own daughters. You don't know that he's, uh, he had me sleep with his wife. And yeah, man, you don't know about that shit. You know, and, uh, Ouch. And I'd see the guys whispering and stuff, you know, and they're talking about my dad screwing some girl in this town, you know, and all underage, of course. And it was brutal, Roddy. Yeah. You know, and uh, did, I can't imagine. Did, did, did you, know. you go to school every day? Like, mm -hmm. so you took it every day? I took day. it right in the fucking face, man. Yeah. And like... Uh, see, you know, know and, and, and here's the thing. In, in your day... You're an actual star, but in his day, they were just phony fucking wrestlers. You know, sure, fucking phony wrestler, bullshit. It was after the gorgeous George, right, and, right, uh, right, right, right. All of a sudden, it was territory a entertainment. You know, yeah, it was all those guys been rigging matches or nothing but the da da at, at its strongest. Oh, it was pretty brutal, man. So your your mom was your would. Was you raised by your mommy? I was raised by my grandparents. Man, my mother wasn't old enough to raise us. <clears throat> my mother was only 13 when I was born. My dad raped her when she was 12. Yeah. And they had three kids. And then he split. And uh, she's fucking 18 years old and got three kids. So the kids got split up. Um, I'm sorry, if I may, do you, you, you have a brother? I had a brother and sister. Your brother, I've seen him wrestle when he was... No, 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 that's Sam Houston. That's, no, Sam that's a half-brother. No. I'm sorry. Okay. My real brother is in Amarillo, Texas. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he works for a trucking company, man. Uh, my sister was kidnapped and murdered. Yeah, yeah. Your sister was kidnapped? Yeah, man, yeah. Did they ever find out? Uh, yeah, they got the lady that did it. You know, she did 10 years for kidnapping. They couldn't prove murder because they never found a body. But there was enough blood in the trunk of the car to know she was dead. So that's all because of my father, because my father was raping her. And then when she got like 17, she wanted to be loved. Yeah. You know, and she reached out to a fucking guy that was 50-something years old and marries him. And he fucking, you know, got an insurance policy, knocked her off. and. <laughs> so how old would you have been at this time, Jake? About, uh, let's see, 26, 25, 26. And when did you kind of part... From so you're with your grandma and grandpa. Uh, well, well, grandmother till I was like uh, twelve. She died of cancer. My grandfather was a hopeless alcoholic, so I couldn't live with him. So for about six months, I went and lived with my father, and that's when I got sexually abused by the stepmother. Well, I couldn't handle that shit, so I flipped and went to my mom and lived with my mom until I graduated from high school. And at that time, 
with your mom? Did you bond with mom? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you yeah. love mom? The best that we could. Yeah, I love my mother to death, man. She's, I mean, she's fucking 12 years old, man. And she didn't give me up. So, of course I love her, you know. She's, yeah. in, a, she's in a rest home now. Her lungs are shot. But, uh, yeah. It is what it is. And then, so, what age were you when you were in the business full time, putting that behind you? Yeah, and 18, start, 19, man. Gotcha. Yeah, started when I was 19. You know, one of the things that, um, you know, it's such a great piece of talent. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, I think those who really know is, uh, you're, you know, is a psychologist. Well, you, you know, know? I, I tell you how I think I came up with that, though, Roddy. And when you're an abused kid, sexually and physically abused, when you get tossed from family to family, drugged back and forth, yeah. you learn to lie at an early age. You learn to conform. You learn to give what that person wants. Yes, sir. You live on the fly, man. And you're ready for that fucking next lie just like this. What does that person want to hear? And you read people. We got radar. Right, right. So that's where I picked that up at. And survival. Yes, sir. Wanting to survive, man. what you had to do. Yeah, man. Then, so, now, you, what age are you? Well, I'm, where did you get your first break? I'm, I'm sure you traveled all the yeah. territories, like all the rest. Um, I had finished high school, and I wanted my dad to be proud of me. Still wanted that fucking pat me on the back, Dad. And yeah. I went. I was going to go to college to be an architect. An, an architect. Yeah. That's what I wanted so you to had in that in school? Were you a good student? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? I didn't have. To, I never took a book home in my life. But if I heard it, it was there. I was just naturally gifted just, there, you know. You just had that knack. Yeah, I'd hear it, and I understood. I was I was smart, just figuring stuff out, you know. And that's why you're visual smarter yeah. than reading smarter, yeah. equally. Yeah, just if I heard it, it was in there. Gotcha. You know. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, I went to see him and say, "Hey, you know, by the way, I'm going to go to college. I graduated from high school. I thought you might want to fucking know, you know. Thanks yeah. for showing up." <laughs> you know? Like, that's good. You going to college? Hope you don't want any money. You ain't giving me shit yet, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You just and, wanted to. Uh, yeah. yeah. You wanted just, a hug. I wanted, that's it. And he fucking blew me off. And uh, a couple of nights later, I was fucking drinking. And it came to my mind that if my dad was going to be proud of me, I had to get in the ring and wrestle. And I jumped in the fucking ring. So yeah, that, that was shit first out of me. Rust. Yeah. I hear you. Got who, stretched. Who, who was it? Billy Bad Boy Hines. Okay, then. Stretched the dog shit out of me, man. Knew exactly who I was. Stretched the piss out of me, man. Did he do it uh, as initiation or did he do no, it? No, he did it because I jumped in the fucking ring and challenged him. Oh, you mean you were the show? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Hey, Rod. Hello. Hi. Yeah. My Here. name's Rod. Nice to meet you. call it, you know, alcohol, right? And yeah, uh, just, you uh, just jumped in the yeah. ring. Yeah. Come on, you motherfucker. Down. I'm not afraid of you. I'll kick your fucking ass. You know, alcohol, right? And Dad. He's there. stretching. He's in the back watching. And if your I'm, dad was on the card. Yeah. 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 So here, boom, I'm going to show Dad. And got stretched. And How fucking long? How pissed, long? Uh, about 12, 14 minutes. Oh, that's a long guy. Pissed long. myself, yeah. shit myself, uh, yeah. crawled in the liquor room, crying. Yeah. My dad looked at me, looked down at me, and says, you're gutless, you'll never amount to fucking anything. I'm ashamed of you. And turned and walked away. And that night, man, I made a deal with the devil. I said, you know, help me, I'll do whatever I gotta do, devil. But I am gonna fucking be better than that motherfucker ever was. And okay, that's when the lion and cheating started, bro. <laughs> and, okay, uh, so then they, um, how did I get started? Uh, yeah, yeah, like so. When did you probably didn't need formal training? Well, here's the thing. Here, here's here's the real funny one. You remember Luke Brown? Yeah, man. Well, he used to be my dad's old tag team partner years ago when they were the Kentuckians. Yes. Okay. Yes. So after my ass kicking. I'm nursing my wounds in my dad's house about four days later. Phone rings. It's my dad. Do you have a white shirt? I got a t-shirt. Do you have any black pants? No. 
Luke's coming by. He's going to pick you up. You're going to referee tonight. What? Hangs up. It would be scary as hell. Roddy, here's the thing. I wasn't smart. I believed it was real. So you get the black pants and the striped I am fucking shaking like a leaf. <laughs> going to this fucking town. And I keep, Luke, what I do this? Who's a neighbor? Just uh neighbor? Neighbor, yeah, I just talk. Well, <laughs> Gabe, you know. Hey, Gabe, yeah. yeah. Didn't know so late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We'll give you the finish. The what? The finish. Oh, the end of the match. Yeah. Well, what if a guy, like, is pulling his hair down? Just, can't, just count him. You know, one, two. Okay. What if a guy won't, won't, won't stop? He's choking the guy. Do I, like, punch him or gouge him in the eye to, to save the guy's life? He's like... What? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I mean, what if, what if I don't like the guy? Can I just disqualify him? He's like, he says, aren't, aren't you Smithart? I'm like, am I what? Smithart. What do you mean? He says, aren't you smart? I'm like, goddamn right I am. I just finished high school. I was going to be a knife attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he broke my heart. He says, well, did you Gabe, it's my phony. Did, yes. I thought my dad was a god. I got my ass kicked in school for years defending him. Gotcha. <sighs> you were defending the honor of the family. Right. In the business. And that's my dad. Yeah. And don't you talk that way about yeah, my dad. My dad's not a phony wrestler. It's not. It's real. Which would bring on so much oh more. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! And I was a string bean too, man. I wasn't no size at all to me. I got the dog shit whipped out. They just got tired of whipping my ass. They did. It's when like you, fuck it, man. It's when, when you in that when you went in that first night in Rough Reed, do you remember who the match was? Oh, I don't remember the, the matches. Uh, uh, but you, you got Big Ross and Danny was there, I think. Um, and, and how did Bob you Bob Sweet? Yeah. Bob oh, Sweet. the fans love me. <laughs> I, I was the baby face referee from hell. I fed heat. There ain't no fucking heat. I call shit from the back. I know you pulled this fucking hair, motherfucker. Break one, two. Oh yeah, I'm the boss. worst fucking show of ever. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, the boss I'm, I'm grabbing here. motherfuckers. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, oh. they explained to me real quick that Oof. you got to allow some of this shit to go on to create heat. I'm like, what, heat? What do you mean, heat? It's fucking hot earth shit. It's Louisiana, goddammit. What the fuck are you talking about? You know? Yeah, it was pretty God, bad, man. Know. So you, you got through the night of hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somehow they got the main band. And then out. I went the next night and the next night. And, and then Kevin when and did you, from the referee's outfit, uh, to start you wrestling? Lose? Yeah. Um, well, I was refereeing for about six months, which is the greatest way in the world to learn. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, absolutely. The most important guy Everybody in the should referee. Yes, sir. The most important guy in the is a referee. Yeah, right? you learn timing. You learn how to read people, too. You know, and you learn your placement in the ring without having to fucking get your neck broke. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and you learn how to get out of the way. <laughs> you know? But, um... Oh, it was like six months, and then at the time, Bill Watts would go out and work on the territories, but he owned Mid South. So it's, it's Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, Mid South. So, and is that? Uh, pardon me, my. Uh, so did all this take place in Oklahoma yeah, with yeah, Bill? Yeah. And Leroy was he Leroy the, was Leroy the boss at the yeah time? he owned it he owned it and yeah, Bill he was, was the enforcer he was blind yeah yeah. Okay, so you... Uh, and Bill Watts would go work on the territories because he wouldn't work Louisiana because it was so bad was at the miles. time. Uh, well, it wasn't just that. There was no money being made back then. God, it was horrible. Okay. But um, so, I'm refereeing there and then Bill Watts come back in because what Bill would do is he'd let my dad build the territory for about six, seven months. Then he'd come in and kill all the fucking hills, right? And then leave again. And then leave again. Yeah. But he yeah. came in and see me there, and my dad, you know, I'll fuck him. He ain't fucking refereeing. Get him out of here. He's fired. So, so I got fired. 
So then I decided, you know, and I'd started learning how to run the ropes. Sure. Do a couple of little things. That's about it. And um, and I just I'm going to fucking try it. So I went to Memphis and lasted, I think, five weeks in Memphis because I was horrible. Yeah, but you know, for your I froze. Five weeks isn't a bad one. Well, I, I, With I, no training. I could have stayed longer, except I didn't bring enough money. <laughs> you, know? you didn't bring your own piggy bank. I didn't bring my piggy bank. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, I mean, yeah. making fifteen dollars a night, you know. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, I just went from there, man, and and I I would have never made it in this business if it had not been for Buck Robley. Buck uh, Robley. Buck Robley, because Buck, um, oh my God. he let me, you know I I went three or four territories not knowing anything, and I had a real bad problem. I vapor locked. <laughs> when, when I got when, when I got in the ring, I vapor locked. When I got in the ring and they ring the bell, I go. Oh, and I'd hold my breath, and you couldn't move me. I was stick man. <laughs> Could not bend me. You know? So when that bell rang, you just ceased. <laughs> and the matches would last, you know, three or four minutes. You know? What are you going to do when a guy's vapor rock right. or lock? Right. <laughs> yeah. So Buck, and the only reason Buck helped me is because my dad told everybody not to help me. He didn't want me in the business. He, your dad didn't no. want you? No, of course not. So your dad at that time... Would have a lot of uh, clout. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that yeah. was that. So the only people that were hiring me were people who didn't like my dad. So there were a lot of them, by the way. <laughs> and Buck Robley is one of them. Huh. And uh, Buck took me to Kansas City. And uh, Kansas City, yeah, Moscow of America. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and um, I was there, and uh, just barely getting by, man. And Buck, Buck knew my problem. He tried to talk me through it, and fucking nobody could help him. Tried to talk you through, like, getting over the vapor lock shit. Oh, okay. You gotcha. know, and, and just going blank. Yeah. And um, finally, one morning, he called me before television. He says, I was never on television because I was so bad. I mean, they wouldn't even do me for a job on television. No. I was that, <laughs> I was Cause that cause fucking I worked, bad. I worked KC back there with Gus Karras. And, yeah, yeah. You know, let's do the wrestling folk. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I was there with Bulldog Bob Brown, all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. the Vikings. Rufus Star, Rufus Star, Joan, Rodney Edgerson. The, Edson, the yeah. interns, Ken uh, Raimi. The mummy. The <laughs> mummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, way before oh, yeah. his time. Yeah, yeah. Matter so, of fact, it's still way before his so, time. <laughs> Buck calls me. He says, come down to my apartment. I lived above him. Went down to his apartment and he has me smoke about five joints. Uh, he goes, now, was this the first time that you you were smoking or like that? that no, I'd thing? smoked some pot. Yeah, I'd been smoking okay. pot for a while. And what age are you right at? Uh, 20. 20. Smoking okay. pot. Were you I just like a so casual smoker? No, uh, daily, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Casually daily. Casually every day. Yeah. <laughs> just about. Okay, okay. You know, if you if you were for Buck, you had to smoke pot, you know. Gotcha. I mean, that's yeah, how guys used to come into those territories. So you got any good weed? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring me a quarter. Come on, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah. Buck got me okay. really stoned. He says, "You're gonna wrestle on television now." I'm like, "I don't give a fuck, motherfucker." Yeah. Fucking right, baby. <laughs> fuck, I was a star, motherfucker. I had the people popping, <laughs> and I relaxed. Because you you smoke the joint for stone, yeah, man. I just fucking hey, baby, come out of here. And, and, rubber, and the vapor lock went away. The vapor lock went away, and then Buck says, "Okay, here's your problem. Your problem is you're trying to fucking show up your dad, I'm trying you're to trying to, trying to be something. trying to press your dad. Yeah, and you know all these fucking guys, and you know they don't they know that you're not a shit." It's you're horrible. What you need to do is go someplace where nobody knows you. Walk in there like you know this fucking business inside and out. In other words, work your ass off and lie. And that's you know? good advice in those days. Exactly. So I went to fucking Vancouver. Kaniski? Yep. Al Tomko. And Al got my Tomko? break. Yeah, yeah. Bro. I wouldn't have seen you. You were in Portland. Shit. You guys were in Portland? You in fucking. Uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dutch okay. man, Dutch, uh, Dutch savage. savage. Yeah, you yeah, guys Paul were. Ramos. You guys were. Yeah, you guys were in fucking Portland. So this is the time you got really. Yeah, this is 70, 77, 78. Yeah, yeah. So you were up there working for yeah. Kaniski and and doing the yeah. the Canadian move. Yeah. 
And that's when I got my break. I went from there, I went to Stu. A natural progression? Yeah. yeah. How long did you work for Stu? Uh, seven months. So and I went, I went from there and, and just to so Louisiana. Let's, so let's take uh, Vancouver. Um, like, once you finished your run in Vancouver, where were you in the business as far as uh, no starting to, to get your chops kind of? I was the main event. I was the main event in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Working with Moose Morowski. Moose Morowski. Baby Jesus. I oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You yeah. might, you, did you Eric say Eric Froelich? Eric, Eric Froelich, yeah. Did we, did we, did we sleep John on John Quinn? Day? Holy cow. <laughs> well, um, oh, uh, doggone it. Mormon. Um. Oh yeah, 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 Jonathan. Yeah, uh, yeah. John, yeah, Jonathan. John, Jonathan. Don Leo Jonathan. Don Leo Jonathan. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, I yeah, used yeah. to ride with John Leo Don, John, uh, Leo Jonathan, and I'd play. He'd have me play my harmonica, and he did um, a third of the world's underwater yeah, welding demolition shit in like Alaska, yeah. and like he used to take me and help yeah, me man. and stuff, and. So he's telling me this story one time, you know, he's down there and he, he says, and this huge, great white shark came. And I believed in him so much. I says, what did you do? He says, I became part of the rock. I stood still. What the hell do you think I did? I believed it. Leo, you know, man. I was there when Don Leo Jonathan slammed Andre. Andre yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what blew his back out. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it ended his shit. How we didn't? Anyway, okay. So, yeah. well, I only came down to Portland like once or twice. And it was just like yeah, yeah, to the TV or whatever bullshit, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so now you go over for Stu, and you get yeah. about a, a five, seven yeah. month run. Yeah, yeah. And so, and in those days, those that don't know, so you got over in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. You go to Stu. You got to get got over over there. there. Yeah, main event again. So. But the thing that you're learning is what works. How to doesn't. work in the main event. Because there's a big difference between opening match and main event. Big difference. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Okay. So then seven months there. And what's well, your next? What's the next? Louisiana, movie? man. But you were ready now. I, I was, was closer to being ready. Gotcha. But, yeah, uh, okay, so I yeah, still went. I still black. went down there and still got intimidated by fucking Ernie Ladd and <laughs> Killer Carl Cox and <laughs> what the fuck, man. Yeah, well, you were a smart boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. You know, <laughs> you know wrestling right. too, and yeah. But er I was at the point where I could learn. Ernie Ladd, there's absolutely no nutrition in the stems and the seeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what well, Ernie say? There's two things I can't stand. It's a dog chasing a car and a broken down wrestler chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> or come over here and get underneath the learning tree. <laughs> Let me drop some fruit on you. Okay, so oh, in Louisiana, though, um, and I just, just, um, I'm going in my head in the wolf with a lot of pain. Oh yeah, being man. carried yeah. and a lot of anger, man. It, oh. I know, not, um, a lot of I would hate. imagine that that drove you. I was fueled by hate. Yeah, were yeah, you, were you working clean or rough? I was smoking. Pardon? I was smoking pot, man. And and, but like, no, were you looking, were you a baby face or heel? Ah, uh, baby face. Baby face. Okay, and when you came to Louisiana? It's I was a baby face. And how long did you work in Louisiana? About four months, and I broke my arm. And was it an and accident, then, or did during someone... the match? And then um, Watts taught me into cutting the cast off, and I did a compound fracture on it. Yeah, I think a so year and a half. half. That's that old bullshit. Yeah. If you're gonna die, kid, die in the ring. It's well, come back, get your fucking job, or I'll give it to somebody else. Yeah. If you can walk, you can wrestle. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. And, so um, you got your I was a year and a half out then. So then you're out of the business for yeah, a year and a yeah. half. Okay, so just hang on now. Hang on. Like yeah. that year and a half, you were out of the business. I can't imagine oh, what was going man. through your mind, your heart. Yeah, man. You crushed. know, you, you finally crushed. got over yeah. the crushed. thing that you wanted to do, and now 
your arm's broken, you're sitting. And nobody's calling me, bro. And nobody gives nobody a shit. Nobody gives a fuck, man. Yeah. So I came back with even more hate. <laughs> oh, yeah. So man. here's the thing. When did you turn heel? Ah, <sighs> see, there was that. There was Louisiana. Then from Louisiana, I went to Charlotte, where I met you again. Gotcha. Yeah. And Oof. then from Charlotte, I went to Florida and became a heel. So they're just stopping at Charlotte. Holy cow, what a talent pool at the time. Ricky yeah. Steamboat. Yeah, but they weren't doing anything with it, man. They weren't doing anything. Well, man, you remember that shit. Yeah, I do. There was no Booker, man. No. Nah. Fucking really Oli? Are you shitting me? Big face I used to call. Oh, my God. Oli. Uh, brother, I remember when you used to piss on his fucking door. <laughs> I did, too. Yeah, I used, to, I used to go by and piss there, too, just so I could fit in, you know? Piss on his door. Yeah. Here's the day's in. Yeah, <laughs> Fucking oh, me, man. yeah, I did, too. Uh, his, he yeah. was a bully. Boy, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So, okay. You went, I'm sorry, to Florida? Mm hmm and is that the first That's time? Went heel, yeah. And the, the the reason, Jake, I'm bringing this up is, I know for me, when I turned heel, everything I had inside me it was coming out. Bro. Oh man! And I was creative as a motherfucker. And you you were oh, driven, right bro. from the beginning, fucking great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because that you know. Because I was, with, I was with Kevin Sullivan, oh, <laughs> Prince of Dark, Sick Joe's. Oh yeah, yeah, it was oh, spewing out of me. <laughs> yeah. So not only did we have, yeah. then you get introduced to Kevin Sullivan. Hoof, hoof. Okay. Um. Oh, uh, uh, listen, I, I my daughter waiting on me. Okay. You um. Sure? You know what? I love you so much. Uh, we'll do it again sometime. Man. I'll be glad to. I love you so yeah, much. Man. I'm really happy you came. Oh, bro. I enjoy and it. And I'd do anything for you. Oh, I know that, bro. Um, I just want us to be healthy and happy, man. Yeah. That's all I went out of life. I found my way. You have to. God bless, man. Love you. Love you. Love my Whoa. You know, it's hard on me. I, uh, I'm a little ahead of all these guys, and I know what they're feeling. I know what they're going through. Uh, but anyway... <clears throat> Um, I got to tell you some dates. Got to do some business here. I'll be uh, uh, in Newcastle, Indiana, opening up a new sports bar there with historic properties. On the board is like Ken Starr and, uh, you know, pretty, pretty heavy board there. Um, but I am, so I'm going down there. I want to talk to the Chambers of Commerce, <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, rather. Uh, that should be fun. And uh, that is in... Uh, April uh, 3 and 4, uh, uh, April 17th and 18th, my birthday, going to be in Boston, uh, the 24 and 25 gonna be of April, going to be Wizard World, and then things get even uglier, May 6th, Chicago, May 15th, 16th, Detroit City, baby, here I come, uh, May 22nd, 23rd, Houston, love Houston, I used to stay at the cheapest hotel, it's called the Chief Hotel, they, they just laid another carpet down, they didn't even vacuum, uh, and then on Lancaster, I'm doing a really cool thing, uh, Lancaster, uh, Michigan for um, uh, bullying, I have a new bully campaign coming out, in Knoxville, on June 5th and 6th, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, on June the 27th, that's as far ahead as I want to go. Um, uh, listen, I, there's a PSA I did. It's called, I Stand for the Silent. I did it with these beautiful kids. You'll see it out there on all these television shows. And uh, I'm taking a stance against bullying. Um, the reason that I got turned on to this, I, I spoke with the father of this young man that was being bullied so much, he killed himself. And, holy cow, no more. And I'm not going to just do the PSA and then walk away like, I, like I've done something. You'll see it. I stand for the silent. You'll see it, and I'll be it. You make them, I break them. Legend killer, bully killer. I love you with all my heart. Um... Bye, 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 and uh, get my little girl through college, and may all your dreams come true, said the Irishman. Bye-bye.